Hey there, is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together, following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So welcome to church. Aloha kakayaka. Yeah, you hear the bell. It's the start of a beautiful day. We're here live at the Weird Mall, and I hope you folks are enjoying this beautiful Sunday. St. Patty's Sunday, I guess. It's all green. It's okay. It's good to go green. We're going to worship you this morning, and we hope you guys are ready for worship. Hey, I, I hope you guys can hear us. Sorry about last week, eh? But guess who's back? Chee-hoo. Chee-hoo. All right. <clears throat> Going to give God the glory this morning and, and worship him. You guys came to worship. Amen. All right. When I can see you, I know you're here. When I can feel you, I will not fear. Cause I will trust in you and I will not be afraid. When the battle, when the battle is close at hand, I know you're with me to help me stand. Yes, I will trust in you. And I will not be afraid. I will not, I will not, will not be afraid, be afraid. I will not, I will not be afraid, be afraid. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. When the darkness is when the darkness is closing in and I am running against the wind. So I will trust in you and I will not be afraid when I'm standing. Cause when I'm standing upon that shore and all the battles you've gone before. Yeah. 
Thank you, Lord. We want to continue to praise and worship you, God. Thank you for this beautiful, beautiful day. Such a beautiful day coming out of the cold laws. We made it. I can't believe. It's been a last super busy couple of days. I never drive so much in my life. <laughs> but thank you, God, for holding us together, holding me together. And just here to worship you. Lord, replenish, 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 sorry, replenish, replenish, all of the above. Fill us up with your Holy Spirit this morning. I will trust in you and know you are there with me forever. I'll confide in you. You're the only answer that matters. Even in the darkness, you will be my light. Even when I'm hopeless, you'll be my guide. I will not be shaken. I will not be moved. Even in the chaos, I know that you're good. You're the keeper. You're the keeper, protector. It is you that holds us together when everything else fails us. It is you. Trust 
Cause I will trust in you and know that you are with me forever. Yes, Lord. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for the worship this morning. Let us all pray. E hova he malele ki a koa i ka hiko ia, i ka nani ka ihi ihi a me ka hano hano, ke ho mai kai ke hozana ke mililani, a ho ho a kone ma koia oe. No laila, e al ho mai oe ka poe kaua, i a koa koa mai ne. E ho mai ka ia mako, a me ka mako mau hana, a e launa pu mai ko u hane he malele, me mako i kulike ai ka mako lave lave ana. Me kau i make make ai. No laila, e alho nani ia ai oe, i loko o ka inoa, o ka makua, ke keiki, a me ka uhane hea malele. O holy Jehovah, the God that is filled with splendor, sacredness, and glory. We thank, praise, and glorify you this morning. Therefore, Lord, have mercy upon us, all of us who are gathered together. Bless us in our work. Let your Holy Spirit rain down upon us and abide within us, that we may be able to do thy work according to your will. Therefore, we praise thee in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and we all say, Amen. Amen. Good morning. How's your smile? I saw smile together. Those are light. Don't forget to smile too. Wear a smile, share a smile, give a smile. Just be so smiley. Smile and give your face a rest. Raise your head to the one you love the best. Turn around, shake hands with the one. Thank God once again for bringing us there here today, and thank you God that the internet working and uh, and everything plug in. You guys can see it. You can see me now. You can. You can. All right. You can plug them all in. Yay! How get them? Get them, bro. Good to have brother Roy back here, and good to see all your smiling faces. Well, oh, today we have the kind of infamous BFF himself, brother Darren. All right. Oh, between him and Arbos was giving me a heart attack, boy, I tell you. John Cam Porty was playing over there. Oh, one, yeah, one is junk, one is poor. And now it's the new, the kind of Tom and Jerry. We get Tom and Jerry, we get John Cam now. Wow. All right. Hey, you know what? Uh, Tuesdays is kicking, bro. You guys are not there. Too bad. You guys are missing out, bro. It's funny. You got to listen to these guys, the stories, I tell you. My wife said, hey, what are you guys doing? But you're so loud in the room. Oh, sorry. I'm excited that when people start sharing, we get excited. So anyway, you're not doing nothing. Join us Tuesday nights at 6.37. Yeah, I turn them on at 6.30, but we wait for everybody to get on. And, you know, we get people driving through the traffic. So, 
By the time they get home to plug in, it's around 7. So join us from 7 to 8.30 now. And uh, we're in the book of Matthew chapter 27. Right now, we went through the walk to Calvary. Now we're going through the trial and uh, persecution and the gruesomeness of what the Lord went through. So join us. It's really good fun. Along with that, we learn about devotions. And it's really been really great. We started from the basics. And it's awesome because they're kicking in. Everybody is getting it. In fact, I got to work hard now because you guys way ahead of me. I got to go. I'm doing my uh, lesson that morning, my soap. Trying to catch up with everybody. But if you're not doing nothing, join us on our Zoom room. We just added one more person from uh, Kahaliwano Kiakua. Brother Hanole Anak, thank you for joining us and sharing your manao. Our Zoom number right there, 337 083 Just upload uh, your URL to zoom.com and look for the join and type in that number and we let you into our room. All right. Speaking of Aruma, how's <laughs> about a uh, big, big warm aloha to our kahu here from Molokai. Came in uh, Friday night for a procedure yesterday. It was a long, long day from Friday to today. It was a long day. I want to praise and thank God for her joining us this morning. And prayers for her church as she flies back home today. Uh, well, whenever the time is, so it's 5 o'clock, now it's 6.30, so hopefully by then. So long as she gets to dialysis by tomorrow. Um, so uh, continue praying for the church and the whole mana, because uh, next week, yeah, next week is youth rally for our youth from the whole mana of uh, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Uh, so continue praying for our youth as they travel on to the island of Molokai. Wow. Any kiki or any youth like join them? Let us know. Hey, next Sunday is Palm Sunday. And we'll be right here uh, for Palm Sunday at Weird Mall. Hosanna in the highest. So join us next week Sunday, same time, right here, same station, same place, different handy van. Come join us. All right? Uh, yeah, yeah, please bring your own palm, man. Don't go pick the ones in here. Bombay gets scolding. <laughs> Don't go pick one of the trees over here. Bombay, they come see me and then. Uh, and uh, if you know palm, you can use your other palm. All right. And then the following Sunday is the last Sunday of the month. It is Easter Sunday. So I'm making, we still still talking about it. I'm planning, because Easter Sunday, we'll probably do like a potluck. And then on uh, first Sunday, we just could do communion. I don't like to potluck two weeks in a row. That's too much work for me. It's hard for cook for, two guys, for five guys, I tell you. I only used to cooking for two. <laughs> so it's a lot of baking of donuts. Hey, by the way, I'd like to say mahalo to the food bank for the donuts they gave us for, uh, for, for bring today so everybody can have coffee and donuts. All right, let's get right into our message for today. And before we do that, I also want to give a shout out to uh, Kylie, uh, Auntie uh, Marion's granddaughter. As Auntie Marion is part of our, our church over here. And I think she's up there now in California. Well, we'd like to say congratulations to Kylie who gave birth to her baby. Uh, I'm not sure I, if it was a boy or girl, but so baby Kylie too. So congratulations to her and her husband and to Auntie Marion and the family. And uh, yet the Carruthers keep growing bigger and bigger. Awesome. So blessed. 
All right, let's turn to our scripture reading this morning. We're coming from the book of 2 Corinthians and the New Testament. So if you get bustled at your Bibles, and if not, you should have it online today. And we'll start off with the Walala Hawaii for our Hawaiians out there. Second Corinthians chapter 12. I'm going to read from verse 6 to verse 10. Amen? All right. Aiko kako hele hula ana. Iloko oka epistatole lua a Paulo. Kaluna olelo iko corineto. Bokuna umikuma kolu pauku e ono a pau ana ika pauku umi. Pene i pala pala ia. Ina paha i ake au e ka ena aku. A ole ou na au po. No ka mea e hai aku ana au i ka oia i o a ka. Ke oki ne no au. A mana o mai paha ke kahi i au. He ki e ki e maluna o kana i ike mai ai i au. A me kana e lohe mai ai i au. O ho o ki e ki e paha vau no kanui o nā mea i ho ike i a mai. Ua ha avi i a mai i au. He mea oi oi, ma kuu oi, ma kuu oi o, sorry. He elele na Santana, e kui mai ai iau. Ohi ike, oho o ki e ki e, au a nei, au. No ia mea, e kolu au, no e ana aku i ka haku. I haalele mai, Ia mea iau. I maila ke la iau. Ua lava kuu loko mai kai no. No ka mea. Ma ka na vili vili ka ho'o maopopo ana. O ko'u mana. No ia ho'i e kaena aku au me ka olo olo i kuu Na vili vili, i kau mai ai ka manao Kristo maluna i ho ou. No laila, he olo olo kou i ka na vili vili a me ka ho ino ia, a me ka po ino, a me ka ho o ma au ia, a me ka pilikia no Cristo, no kamea, i kuu na vili vili ana, a laila ua i kaika au. Our scripture reading this morning found in the New Testament is in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Reading from verse 6 all the way to verse 10. So follow along as I read. Verse 6. Even if I should choose to boast... I would not be a fool because I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain so no one will think more of me than is warranted by what I do or say. Or because of these surprise, surpassingly great revelations, therefore I, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness. <clears throat> 
so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness, in insults, in hardships, in persecution, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Let us pray. Our great Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for the scripture reading you have given us, Lord. Bless our scripture this morning. Lord, I pray that you open our eyes and our ears and our minds to receive you. But Lord, let us receive it deep into our hearts. That it can marinate within our hearts. And as we... Absorb, observe what you've teaching us this morning. Lord, I pray that we can apply that into our daily walk. And not just our daily walk, but that we can go and share your gospel that you've given us this morning. So, Lord, I pray, for the, pray you for the hearts that are here to receive you. I thank you and I glorify you for our worship this morning. May my words be my be your words, my thoughts be yours. Lord, lift our spirits up and continue to persevere. Help us to persevere towards being more like you, your son, each and every day. We lift up, up all of our prayers to you, Lord, and we glorify you in this awesome worship Sunday. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. <clears throat> oh, speaking of which, as a child, Tommy Boy viewed grown ups as wise and incapable of failure. They always know what to do. And one day, when, I, when he was growing up, he says, I'll always know what to do. Two, well, one day, and that one day came many years ago, and all it has taught him was that he still was clueless on what to do. Whether it's illness in the family, problems at work, or conf conflict in, his re in a relationship, such times have wrestled all the delusions of personal control and strength, simply leaving him with one option, to close his eyes and to whisper to the Lord and say, Lord, help me. I don't know what to do. You know, a lot of times we go through the stuff like that and we, you know, even me, I've been through like a lot of times like, like I'm against the wall and I just, you know, and that's what God calls us to do, that we we surrender, we submit to him, and we call upon him. That's what he wants us to do, to lean on him, call upon him. And the Apostle Paul understood this feeling of helplessness, yeah, the thorn in his life, which he may have been a physical ailment, caused him much frustration and pain. And was like, I was like, what, Paul? Really? Not Paul. He was so strong. But a lot of times, that's on the outside, right? We know like people be strong on the outside, but on the inside, he suffered. Like Jesus, we think Jesus, we never know how much he suffered until we actually started reading about his walk to Calvary and his crucifixion, the beatings he took, the what flogging we learned, right? What about flogging? Yeah, where they abused him mentally, verbally, physically, and also made fun of. How many of you have been like that? People make fun of you. That was most of my life. But it was true this story, however, that Paul 
experience God's love, his promises and blessings as sufficient for him to endure and overcome all of his difficulties. He learned the pers that personal weakness and helplessness, it doesn't mean defeat. And in fact, it's kind of the opposite, right? Opposite of what we normally think. Weakness it doesn't mean you're weak. To be weak actually takes a lot of strength to 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 um, be go to weakness and helplessness. It takes a lot of strength. And we can see that a lot of people they, they don't have that strength and they what they do they make wrong choices instead of good choices. And we surrender to God. See when we surrender to God in trust, yeah, these weaknesses become tools for him to work in and through. All these circumstances. So what I want to talk about about scripture today is basically talking about this. And the title of this message is to be growing up in Jesus. So we're going to start with our first two verses, six and seven. Content in one's suffering, as Paul puts it. And he says that in our verse six and seven, he says, even if I should choose to boast, I would not be a fool because I would be speaking the truth. He says, but I refrain from boasting. Yeah, I refrain. So no one would think more of me than is warranted by what I do or say. Verse 7, he says, or because of these surpassingly great revelations he's talking about, that how God is working in his life. Yeah? Remember, because Paul used to be Saul. And then he became Paul, and he became what? A great servant of the, of the Lord. He's the one that went out and witnesses to what? All the Asian people. Yeah? Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Asians, all the Asians. And Paul says, I choose to boast. He says, if I choose to boast, I'd be a fool. I wouldn't be a fool, he said. Because that's the truth. But he says, I refrain from boasting because it's not about me. It's about the Father. Because without God, what? I am nothing. And he knows that whatever he has accomplished is because of his faith in who? In the Lord. Amen? And the Lord is the one is his strength. Yeah? And... and the Lord is the strength of his accomplishments. All that Paul accomplished was because through the, the power of the Holy Spirit, because the power of Jesus, because God has given him the strength. And, he, and God also paved the way for him. You know, we read that all over the Bible, how, how the, the army of, of, of God, so small had conquered three to four, five times the size of the army. Yeah, maybe he went out with 500 men, but he conquered about 3,000 Ottoman. And that's not because they was good fighters. No. They was what? Faithful fighters of the Lord. You know, everybody keep adoring my hat. I get this hat. It says God's warrior. Is it God's warrior? Oh, you know that green hat I get? Everybody always come. Oh, I like your hat. <clears throat> and that's what it is, being good warriors for the Lord. Because, you know, when you, when you, when you look into how they went out, you know who went out first? Not the army guys with all the swords and the spears. and the, No, it wasn't them. You know who went out first? The worshipers. That was the front line. That's why they call, or well, New Hope, they call that front lines. You know, all the worship team and all that. They call that front lines because that's the ones went out. And fight first. They sent out the army. 
the drummers, the I don't know what they had back then, the the trumpets when they go out, and they would start, and that was the worship. See, they worship before they went into the fight. They praying and worshiping God, and God was the one that gave the small army the strength to conquer the bigger army. See, God also showed Paul things that Paul was not a really allowed to al allowed to reveal on earth. It was so intense that Paul says that, you know, he never know if he traveled f in his physical body or out of his physical body. But he knew and he insisted that it did happen. And he says that God knows how it could be, how it came to be. He's not sure how it came to be, but he know what God revealed to him. And that's why, like, our Bible studies, I encourage teaching soap, devotion. Because I get that ever since I became a pastor, everybody always asks me, how you know when God speak to you? Yeah? They always ask, how you know when God speak to me? And I just tell them, it's what God told me. He said, when the last time you spoke to him? So doing devotions is a way of us communicating and connecting with the Father. And the more you com communicate, the more you make this connection and you build this relationship, yeah? The more you do that, the more you start what? It's kind of like boyfriend, girlfriend. You're always calling them up, yeah? When you first calling them up, yeah? Constantly, every day, yeah? But then afterwards, when you get into the relationship, next thing you know, when they get a couple years as a couple, they can start answering their own questions already, right? They already can answer that question. Why? Because they know their significant other. Same thing. The more we know Jesus, the more we know what he's going to say to us. And the more he communicates to us, the more we start seeing as God sees. We start hearing what God is trying to tell us. Yeah? So... Devotions is a big thing to me. That's why in our Bible studies now, as we started from the basics, is that teaching them how to speak to God, how to connect this connection. Because that's the only way they're going to start hearing what God is telling them. But God knew that such knowledge would have also have potential to make Paul arrogant proud and conceited so God wanted Paul to be what Christ like in his humility and he didn't want Paul to seem like he was superior over anybody yeah. Yeah. we see this in a church today yeah some people when they get the um, the power in a church as a leader worship leader Bible studies teacher or some of these guys who just a parking attendant all of a sudden, they think their status is up here. Yeah? And the power goes to the head. Just like somebody's past. That's what happened with Satan, yeah? Satan. God gave him the power to be like right up there. But then afterwards, he thought he was just as good as God. And we do that as humans. Same thing. We get one puck in that kind of hole. Hey, you, puck over here, bro. Over here. Yeah? The greeters, hey, you know, you talk too much. You go sit in the back over here. Oh, you, you need to hear. Go in the front. You will get a little bit the kind. But, you know, like, like Jesus said, what? When he came, he never come to be, what, served. So if we be more like Jesus, just because you're given the power as a pastor, that doesn't mean you tell everybody what to do. Yeah? Jesus came to serve. So I choose to come and serve. Yeah? To help empower and enrich people to be perseverance to get through those dark times when you got to deal with the devil yeah that's what it is it's because I'm a pastor that doesn't mean I'm better than antichrist over here no yeah that doesn't mean oh who who want better call me or, or her no yeah we all the same and we all should be what lifting up, but lifting up others, building up your brother, building up your sisters, yeah, 
iron sharpens iron. That doesn't mean my iron more better than your iron or my sword sharper than your sword. No. Always being humility. And so God created this thorn, sort of speak, in Paul's sight to remind them that, hey, I've given you a lot of power. But remember, humbleness. Without humbleness, you cannot do my work. See, if Paul never have God's humbleness and like be like more like the Lord, and he thought he was all that in a bag of chips. No. And so he put all these thorns. Yeah, you know, after the first tour he took, during the second tour, he never do them. He did them from where? Imprisonment. He did them being on lockdown. But he never stopped persevering and doing God's work. And that shows the power of who? Paul? No, that shows the power of God. That Paul can still do the Lord's work being locked in prison. And he taught Paul to be what? A teacher. Just like Jesus taught the disciples and then he had to go and he told disciples, you carry on. Paul had some of the followers went through all of his journeys through the Asians. And when he was on lockdown, he sent them out. Hey, go check on these guys and keep encouraging them. Said, remember what Paul taught you guys? Continue on. Because somebody was doing the same thing, like, oh, the power got to the head, and then what happened? Confusions, right? The Ephesians? They had what? Now, you know, you know when you get, like, past. I don't like to mention our pastor, but you get a good pastor. And then the pastor got to go somewhere else. And then you get the other pastors come in. And everybody, all of a sudden get division now because, oh, I don't like that pastor. I'm going to look to the other pastor. So now we get division. It shouldn't be like that. Because when you come you, when you come to, for, to church, you don't come for listen to the pastor. Although we did. We did. Yeah, I went to uh, listen to Pastor Wayne because I just love the way he speaks. But it's not all about that where we're going to choose him above others. Because when you came, you went to hear the word. See, I came to go there because I know he's going to preach a good word. Yeah? So when he got to go, well, we got to find out what's the good word in this next pastor. Yeah? And so that's the same thing. It's all about when you go to church. You don't go to church because of the pastor. You go to church because the word is good. You're getting fed the spiritual word. And that's what God is making sure that Paul continues to speak the spiritual word because the word not coming from him. The word coming from who? God. The word is still the same. When you speak the word of God, it remains the same yesterday, today, and forever. When you speak the word of Jeff, it changes because Jeff gave one bad day, the message is going to change. But if Jeff continues to speak the word of God, if we get a good day, bad day, whatever day, the word's still the same. Amen? Amen? Let me share that scripture. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 12. And it says, let's read together. It says, before a downfall, the heart is haughty, but humility comes before honor. Whenever we preach the word of God. Humility must be present because the honor doesn't go to you. The honor goes to the word of God. It's not the word of Jeff, not the word of Mary Ann. It's the word of God. We just the messengers in humility. We are honored to share the word of God. And Paul describes that. Paul describes that as a stake or thorn in his body, as a messenger from Satan. Since it was given by God. See, God gave, allowed the devil to be a little thorn into Paul's side. And it's, he, he allowed him to have this constant harassment. But it serves... With the purpose of keeping Paul humble and dependent on Christ. 
See that thorn in his side? Give him a remembrance, you know. <laughs> you ever go to the guy, what they call like, almost like shock therapy. Eh? You're not going to smoke. Every time you bring up the word smoke, oh, get the shock. You know, in our church, they like use the jaw. Every time you get the swearing word, put that dollar inside. That's the shock, eh? remember? Yeah? That's the same thing. That's what Paul, his thorn was. Because God needed him to be, for his purpose is that Paul cannot serve if he keep following the wrong things. And being that he think he's all that and a bag of chips. Because if he think all that and a bag of chips, he doesn't have the power of the Holy Spirit. Which means that all the preaching that Paul can do without the Spirit is going to be useless. So there's three lessons that stand out here. Is that one, humility in his servants are very vital and important to God. So you can, you can write that down or mark that in your notes. Humility in, in serving God. Is very important. Without humility, we cannot control, we cannot use, God cannot utilize us and He cannot offer us the power of the Holy Spirit. Two is that God allows Satan limited power. Let me say that again. God allows Satan limited power to help create weakness in us so that we would lean on him. God creates the, de the devil to keep us grounded so that we lean on him. We lean on the Father because our strength comes from him, not ourselves. And number three is that spiritual strength is no guarantee of health now. See, spiritual strength doesn't mean we're going to be healthy, wealthy, and prosperity. It means that what? God is with us and he's going to provide the strength and our needs. Because why? Our rewards are not here on earth. It's temporary. But we need the strength of God to get us through what God has called us to do. So let me share with you one more scripture in Proverbs 16. And hopefully this will clear up all of us, our first two verses in our first section. Proverbs 16, verse 3, 4, and 5. Amen. Let's read it. It says, commit your works to the Lord, which means submit and trust them to him. And your plans will succeed if you respond to his will and guidance. Verse 4, it says, the Lord has made everything for its own purpose, even the wicked, according to their role, for the day of evil. And verse 5. Everyone who is proud and arrogant in heart is disgusting and exceedingly offensive to the Lord. Be assured, he will not go unpunished. Humility. What is arrogance? Disgusting. It's disgusting and offensive to our Father. Because arrogance we, is telling the Lord, like, oh, we know better than you, Lord. I can do it on my own. That's arrogance. And God wants us to lean on him. See, God going to let it go. He's going to let you be arrogant until you're ready. And then you can start, you know, I used to be the kind thing I can do stuff. I can do stuff. Then I start running into all. I start getting crucified left and right and I'm wondering then we cry to the Lord Lord what's going on how come I thought you was backing me up and God said well you was telling me you got it I don't need you today 
You say you was ordered all of that and a bag of chips. What happened now? Oh, now you need me. And that's where the humbleness kick in. And when you kick in, you say, Lord, Lord, forgive me. I don't know what I was thinking. Oh, I know what I was thinking. I was being selfish. Lord, forgive me. Take control of my life. Yeah? And some of us, we do that. Oh, Lord, take complete control of my life. Jesus, take the wheel. But we're still hanging on to the wheel while he's trying to drive. Ever went through the kind of, when you first learn how to drive, I don't know if you ain't, uh, I never, but, you know, some guys, they get that kind of driver's aid. Some of us, their parent or somebody teach them. Me, I just was given the keys and go chance them. Yeah. But you know when you go do that, and then when you go into, uh, well, if you like pilots, they get the pilot and the co the pilot, and then you know you go try you like take pilot license, and then when you start going that kind, then the pilot take over, right, cut you off. But that's us. We still hanging on to the wheel sometimes, yeah, and we're going down the wrong direction. Yet we still trying to hang on to the wheel instead of let God direct us. Yeah, GPS, use your GPS, not the. Physical GPS, but God's, what is GPS, honey? Use God's protective services, man. See, that GPS is more right than the kind, the Google GPS. No, you use Google. They take you down the wrong street. In fact, Google take you the long way. You're going around the block. But if you use God's GPS, he protects you, and he guides you, and he takes you the perfect way. Sometimes we think, wow, Lord, you're taking me the long route. But no, you know why? That's the better route. If you go that route, you might get into an accident. You might get into an, an, a kind of fender bender, they call them. <clears throat> so that first section we're talking about is to what? Just be content in whatever you're going through. What are you suffering? Oh, Lord, I'm not going to go to that. Oh, you know, it's such a painful. I got to go stand over there and I got to deal with the kind. These people. Oh. Right? Just be content because God has a plan. You know, oh, Lord, why got to go? Why got to? Why I got to see the kind, anti Conchita every time? Or how come I got to go deal with uh, uh, anti Christi? Because you get one plan. The Lord has a plan. We don't can see them sometimes. Yeah? Oh, my God, I got to go pick up my sister. How I'm, oh, I wanted to catch Andy Van. Never mind. God gave one plan. Right? It's not about us. If you call to serve, just serve. If you gotta suffer and drive all day, that's okay. Yeah, if you gotta spend the gas, that's what it's for, right, honey? Spend the gas. Oh boy, I think it's I hang around with Uncle Herbert too much. Spend the money. When you die, you not can take them with you. But that's the truth, you know. That's actually the truth. He speaks the truth. When we die, we cannot take nothing with us. You know what that's it? You came into this world with nothing. When you leave, you leave with nothing. Some guys, they like try to bury their riches with them. But when they go to heaven, if they go to heaven, they cannot take them with them. So God calls us to build our riches in heaven. Let's move on to the next part. Eight and nine. Christianity is hard without Christ. And, and Paul says, three times I pleaded with the Lord to take this thorn out of my side. But the Lord said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. Whoo. God tells him, my power is made perfect in your weakness. Therefore, stop being arrogant. And Paul says, I will not boast all the more gladly about my weakness 
so that Christ may be shown through my weakness. Christ's power rests on me in my weakness. So Paul's life was a constant struggle despite being God's servant. See, everybody think when you become a Christian, that everything will be a bed of roses, all right, and a bag of chips. Spoiler alert, it doesn't work that way. Life is much better. But that doesn't mean you're not going to go through struggles. You're not going to get through hardships. Because if we don't have struggles, if we don't have hardships or weaknesses, you're not going to learn nothing. You know what you're going to be? Like all the other spoiled babies, all the spoiled brats. Because why? We think, oh, God going to take care. Yeah, God going to take care. But you know, the, the, it's not in the Bible, but the saying is, the Lord take care of those who what? Take care of themselves. Meaning, you know, you can sit back and let God do everything for you, right? You're not going to get a wife that's going to take care of everything for you. I'm just saying. Some guys lucky. But then when they grab them, like, wow, you just pile them, right? God not going to spoil us, but God going to take care of us. We don't need to worry about that. It's really simple, but yet it's not. It's a simple, everybody think you got to read the whole Bible back and forth. No, it's the, the message that God gives us is simple. It's we who make it hard. It's all about trusting God. Let go let God run your life. Simply said, but not simply did. You know, the most oldest misconception is that the gospel and being saved will bring earthly success. But the truth is that we all know that our success and our riches is not earthly. It's eternal. We build our riches and we write our names in heaven. Remember our last message? That we worry about writing our names in heaven. Instead of what we did for God. That the power that God gave us, yeah. You remember what is that? The was it the um, the guy that the I forget how many people he sent out, and then they came back and they reported. They said, "Wow, wow, oh God, wow!" Even the demons will listen to us. And and they, and then God is telling them, "Hey, forget about that. That shouldn't be what you boasting about. What you should be boasting about is that wow, we." Our names is written in heaven. Our, you know, the rich is in heaven. Who cares about what you did over here? It doesn't matter. Because you know what? That wasn't even your glory. Because without God, you wouldn't be able to chase demons out. But it was, you went in the name of the Father and the Holy Spirit. That's what did that. The power was in the name of the Father and the Holy Spirit. Not you. He was just a messenger. But you rejoice not in chasing out demons. You rejoice that your name is being written in heaven. Let me show you a scripture in Matthew. Matthew 6. And this is the scripture about building your riches in heaven. We're going to read verse 19, 20, 21. And it says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths, vermin destroy, and where thieves break in with the, the uh, what you call it, excavators and dig out your ATM machine. 
He says, but store yourselves treasures in heaven where moths, vermin, escalators cannot reach up there. And where thieves do not break in and steal your riches. It says, for where your treasure is, ah, I like this verse. Where your treasure is, there your what? Your heart is also. So if you're going to store your treasures here, at the end, your heart is going to be still here, and we're going to be there. Yeah? Because we still, we still in human nature. Because we're storing our, our treasures in human nature. We're like one big mansion in, in a kind. Waikai. I mean, Hawaii Kai. <laughs> right? Not me, man. I want to build a big mansion in the sky, in heaven. Because, you know, maybe you're going to get all the kind of bidet. You might have swimming pool. Maybe you can even get an escalator to go to the second. Or maybe you get three floors. But you know what? You're going to get the kind of pearly gates in your front entrance. Or maybe you can. You can get street of gold. And where you live, you don't need worry. If you know more kind, one leg, God going to give you one leg. Hey, maybe you don't need leg, leg. He's going to give you wings. You don't need one car because you can't fly. Maybe you're going to be like IG Majini. You blink, you're there already. We don't know. If you're kind of blind now, hey, no worry. God going to give you perfect sight. Instead of 20 20, he's going to give you 50 50. See, this life here is only temporary. And so we should focus on riches up high. Because when we die, we leave with nothing. Just as we came. But the glory part is that the story doesn't end when we die here. But it all depends on where... You stored your riches is where you're going to end. If you stored it eternally, you will live eternally. If you stored it earthly, you're going to die. Eternal riches, eternal life. Earthly riches, eternal death. The question, are your, are your names written in the book of life? Things to think about. Where do you want to? Oh, wait. What do you? Oh, what we do here will affect our eternal goal. So think about it. Where you want to live in the future? In heaven or in hell? Do you want to have eternal life? Or do you want to experience the second death? That is the question. Let's move on to our last part, our last verse, verse 10. It says that what? I am weak, but he is strong. Who's he? Peter. Christ. And verse 10, that's what he says. He said, that is why, this is, this is uh, not Peter, Paul. Paul is saying, that is why, for Christ's sake, I delight, I delight in my weakness, in insults, in hardships, in persecution, in difficulties. He says, because for when I am weak, I know I am strong because I lean on the power of the Father in heaven. Paul says it keeps me grounded to know that I am nothing without God. He is my rock and my Savior. What is that scripture? I can do all things to who? Myself? No, to the Lord who gives me the strength. 
The one thing that keeps me in check, Paul says, is that when I am doing what God desires, the devil get a hard time, but he still try to attack me. And I, you know, I know that's my motto. When things go in smooth, I worry. Because I must be doing something wrong. Why? Because the devil is taking a day off on me. But when I'm always doing the Lord's work, man, he likes to attack me left and right. False crack medevac. Right? And so when, when the devil is trying to false crack medevac me and I'm going through persecutions, oh, and I've been through some doozies, but then you know what? That's because the, the devil doesn't want you to be in tune with the Father. He doesn't want you to succeed in your eternal goals. So he's going he gonna to come with twisted minds, twisted ears, twisted everything and say, Hey, 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 brother. Get one of these. Or, and then you get one of these and say, Hey. Oh, you should download this game. Or TikTok. Make friends. Or go watch the videos. So what happens with this? All our, all of our time, all of our mind is occupied on earthly stuff. Yeah? How many of you get the Bible app? How many of you read them more than you spend on social media? That's how the devil gets us. That's how the devil gets to us. And God is saying, be on watch. Keep watch. Things going smooth. Think about it. Be connected more with the Father when things go smooth. I'm not saying that because... When things go smooth, God not is blessing you. God blesses us. But for me, when things go smooth, that's the thorn in my side. And the tongues we and the, the tongues and the things we think that thorns in our side, like problems with bills, problems with your spouse, problems with your kids, all that gripes and all that. I live for that. You know why? Because I know the devil trying to attack me too. And you know who's your you know who's the the one they're gonna use for be that special thorn in your side? The ones that's close to you. Because that's the one that hurts the most. And the devil know, and he's gonna use them. He's not gonna use somebody you hate. He's gonna use the ones that's nearest to you because you know why? Because we're not being watchful. And we leave the window open and the devil slide in. And he use that, your special one, to just put the needle in the side. Oh, we. Oh, we know how he is. Yeah, and it affects, not, we might laugh, but you know what? It affects people because the ones close to you, when they do something so bad, it hurts longer. Then somebody you hate that do something, you, you forget about them in 10 minutes. Yeah? You think about that. The person you know that going to let you down, lets you down. Ah, you know, they do that all the time. 10 minutes later, I forgot about it. But the ones who you count on and all that, and they let you down, what? Oh, that bugger hurt, bro. Oh, my heart sore. And the thing can last for what? What, auntie? 20 years, no speak to your sister. Right? No, that's the truth. Because the devil knows how to attack us. So what? It, Paul's relationship with his father got to be pono because that's what keeps him walking that straight, narrow path. Right? Remember the gate. The bugger is narrow. And if, if we don't have the father guiding us, we're going to be like that kind of guy with that kind of color blind. He not can see the wall. And he keep banging the wall. Right? That's us. But we don't keep our eyes on the Father. We whack in the walls. But when we keep our eyes on the Father, he leads us. 
because he knows. And I always use this metaphor, or not metaphor, but this. Just imagine you're blind. This example. Thank you, Roy. Just imagine. You, this is my example. I just picture myself in a dark room. And you walk into the room, it's so pitch black, and you're trying to find the light switch for turn on the light. Who's the light switch? The light? Who's the light? Jesus. And imagine if we just call on him, he's going to take us right to the light switch. But no, this is us. I get him, Lord. Lord, I get him. Where the hell is this switch? We're trying to find him. But well, we know can. Because why? This is us as we walk. But when you walk with the light of Jesus, you walk with your eyes open. God shows you exactly where to go. We don't know where to go, but if we listen to him, we just follow. Two steps to the right. One, two. Twelve o'clock. We know that the Lord is directing our path. Let me share with you a scripture in Romans 8. Our last scripture, 8. Verse 28 to 30. Amen? And it reads, And we know that in all things, underline all, in all things, God works for the what? The good of those who love him and who have been called according to whose purpose? His purpose, not yours. 29. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son. That we might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified Hallelujah. The bottom line is in this verse saying that when I am weak, then I am strong. It's not on making ourselves stronger. It's in giving up our strength to rely on the power of Jesus. Let me say this again. It's not about our strength, how strong you are. You can be the most muscle guy. Maybe you can lift 500 pounds. But it's not about that, he says. It's about giving up that. It's about giving up earthly strength. It's about trusting and relying on God's power, God's strength. Because you can have all the smarts in the world, but when you walk in a dark room trying to find one little small switch for turn on the light, that's like looking for a needle in a haystack. But God, he knows every bit of hair on your head. And you can be bull ahead and still cannot find it. But God can. But it doesn't mean that we trust God so much that you just sit back, relax, and do nothing. It means that you submit completely. And rely on the Father to get you through. To lean on Him for strength. Why? It's because the power comes from Him. The divine power of Christ. Whereas, it's all about Him. It's never been about us. It's never been... How much you can do. How much you know. 
it's never even been that you got to read the whole bloody Bible to know what God has called you to do. See, a lot of guys, when you ask them and the Lord is telling you to, to step up and do something, oh, wait, uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not ready. I, I don't think I'm knowledge enough to be doing this. You know, I was that. I was Mr. Jonah. You know, planning guys say, oh, you should become a pastor. No, no, I just, I'm just a musician guy. But God came and he said, you know what, bro? Put that guitar on and just share the word of God that you've been doing all this time with your guitar. See, the power is from him, the divine power of Christ. Whereas it's all about him and it's the glory that goes to him. Whereas we shouldn't be arrogant. We shouldn't be proud. We shouldn't be boasting in all of our good works. Because the good works don't get you into heaven. Oops. Another spoiler alert. You can be the best Christian and do so much for the Lord. But if you're not, your relationship is not porno with him, then all that you're doing is useless because you're not building up eternal treasures. You're just building up treasures. You're just getting more patches for put on top of your jacket. You're just getting more medals you can click on top of your kind. More trophies you can put on top of your shelf. But all of those won't get you into heaven. We're just mere servants who've been gifted and blessed to walk and share the gospel on behalf of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Our being as being grown up doesn't mean we're, we're a know-it-all. Sure, you grow wiser with age, more knowledgeable. But the ultimate, but ultimately our weaknesses often reveals how truly powerless we are. That the Lord shines through us. We're just messengers, servants. And God has called each and every one of you, just as he did with disciples, to go out and share the gospel. Whatever God blesses you with, it's not for you. It's for you to bless others. Because God is going to bless your life. That we know. But the blessings he pours into you is to be poured into others. That's what he calls us to do. One true power is in Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Truly growing up means knowing, trusting, and obeying the power that comes when we realize that we need God's help. We cannot do it on our own. We need him. We need his divine power. Without it, we're really nothing. I praise and thank God for this message. It's a very strong message you have. As we make our way to, to uh, Easter, because he's about to leave his disciples, and he's teaching them, as he teaches us today, just to call upon him. You need to call upon the power of the Father because the work is not done until he comes back. And we cannot do the work without the power of Jesus. Amen? Let us pray. 
Our grace and Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for the word that you've given us this morning. We thank you for the scriptures. You backed it up with. And Lord, we know that you are the only way, the truth, and the life. And we submit completely to you. In our weakness, we are strong. Because we rely on the power of the Holy Spirit, the divine power that you have given us. The authority to share the gospel in behalf of your name. But Lord, let us remember like the thorn in Paul's side that the glory always and always will go to you. Because without you, we are nothing. But we can do all things to you, Lord, who give us the strength. Thank you, Lord, for the word. We thank you for the hearts that are here to receive it this morning. We give the honor, praise, and all the glory in Jesus' name we say. Lay my life down at your feet. You're the only one I need. Turn to you and you will always there. Trouble times I hope you see. Put my first, it's all I need. Humble all I am, all to you. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day. Hey, we got a prayer request. Um, can we continue to pray for um, Brother Ambos? Hop, skipping, and jump. He's in uh, Holly Nani right now. He's been in Holly Nani for a while. I'll uh, continue to pray for him and his uh, rehab. We talked to him today. told him, hey, bro, you better eat your vegetables so you can get your out of there. Yeah. 
Yeah. You got to ease on the spam musubi and eat more veggies so you can get strong. And uh, But, you know, praise God, his spirit is really high. So I want to praise and thank God for that. Also be with Jody. Uh, just uh, whew, busy, busy life there. Taking care of um, Ambrose and caring uh, for uh, baby Michael and the mom every week. Got to pick him up, take him to his appointment, take him back to the airport. And then, uh, oh, I think once a week she got to go uh, work, caregiving, and watch the patients. So just continue to be with them as well as uh, Brother Ambrose. I can also pray for um, Uncle Sweets. Continue to pray for him. But if you can pray for Auntie Leslie, Auntie Leslie had to go to the hospital um, with uh, an ailment going on. But, you know, praise for her. If you can continue to pray for her. Um, I'm going to go visit with them tomorrow. She's at Queens, but I want to lift them up in prayer. Um, she had a close call, but she's doing okay. Uh, but she's not out of the woods yet, so continue to pray for her. I uh, also want to pray for... Let me see. Huh? Yeah, pray for Auntie Doris. Yeah, Auntie Doris. Pray for her. No, just kidding. Yeah, prefer the Doris man suck and miss that bugger. Miss that bugger on. Uh, but she's doing okay. Um, you know, we just keep praying that the Lord continue to heal her her aneurysm on the part that helps to control her body. Her mind is strong and her will is strong and she wants to get out of there, but um, you know, she's trying to hang it off the bed is not really good for her. Cause the legs don't let go. The body let go, but the legs not go. She even telling us, yeah, I think I was halfway out the window the other day. I'm like, what, Auntie? Oh, easy, Tiger. But, you know, pray to, uh, you know, it's nice that the last time she came here just to see her eat, like, it's almost like normal, you know. Kaloa pig, boy, and her lomi salmon. So just continue praying for her. Continue praying for the family. Uh, Butch, the son, that uh, the one that comes down that she can break out of the prison over there. Um, but yeah, so I want to pray for her. Continue praying for her. Also pray for our brother over here, brother Deron. They call him Deron. I'm gonna call you Deron. Uh, Deron. Pray for Deron Deron over here, because sometimes that's him. He touch Deron, he let go of Vegas and wait to come home for go to Kaina Hospital. But you know, pray for brother Deron. But we praise and thank God because you know, I was telling him uh, between you now, but you guys giving me a heart attack, boy. You guys taking turns, Junk and Paul. And so their new name now is called Junk and Paul. Yeah. Who's who? I don't know who's who. I don't know. The one in the, I guess the one in the hospital is Junk. And the other guy is Paul. Huh? Oh, so yeah, yeah. See, so, oh, so you Junk, bro. You Junk. And the kind, he's Paul, huh? So he's Paul. <laughs> yeah, Junk and Paul. <laughs> Anyway, I want to praise and thank God for uh, bringing out Auntie Christy and Auntie Conchita over there. Auntie Conchita, are you? Oh, I miss you because I don't go all Moana too much. Hey, man. Yes, yeah, see, we, we, we sing the right song. I like that hat, I tell you. That's my next hat, that oh, shirt. Uh, any other prayer requests? Who? Oh, yeah, continue praying for Roy's family. Um, yeah, we just was listening to the stars, and I heard the father went far down too up there in Kauai. But, you know, praise God, at least they got to eat some good food on Kauai. Eh? I'm jealous now. I like go Kauai, and I just want to go eat. TikTok bakery. What? Mean. Oxtail soup. Ooh. I hope it wasn't like $40 for that, though. No, it wasn't. Not like Zippy's kind. Eh? Oh, mean. Wanna pray for, oh, yeah, also pray for Uncle Stuart. Me and him went to go biopsy, and he didn't beat me. I'm still trying. But want to praise and thank God that his procedure went good. And uh, also pray for, um, what is that name, Uncle? Do I get cancer? Do your friend get cancer? Oh, he passed away. What is his name? Oh, YY Holy. Oh, I want to pray for the YY Holy family. Uh, uncle's friend just passed away with, uh, from cancer. Um, I had somebody else. Did I write it down? Did you write it down? What is this? Well, 
We want to say aloha to uh, Jody and um, and Ambrose. I guess they're online now. Hi, Ambrose. Hi, Jody. We miss you guys. Oh, by the way, your, your name is Pohona, and Darren is uh, huh? Darren is Junkin, and you is Poho. So Junkin Poho. <laughs> I'm ah, just kidding. Stop it. Eat your damn spam also be like that. <laughs> ah, just kidding. Eat your vegetables so you can get strong and break out of there. All right. My wife said cut it because you're talking too much. So. If I have any prayer requests that I miss, hey, continue praying for my cousin on the bigger, big island. Lehua, the Hawaiian, the crazy Hawaiian up there. Take care, Hawaiian. Uh, just continue getting better. All right. Any other prayer requests? Let me know later. Oh, you get one. Huh? Katrina. Oh, okay. We're going to want to pray for uh, um, Darren and uh, Rosie's daughter, Katrina. Uh, we're looking for employment, part-time employment. So anybody out there hiring, let us know. Appreciate it. Love you guys. But you know what? God is in control. You know, oh, and you know, you knew you got a good part, good job. Let my wife know too. But you know what? She okay because she taking a break because she ain't go real. Oh yeah, that's what I wanted to do. Pray for my wife. Uh, she ain't go do her trigger fingers. As you know, the trigger, uh, her trigger finger was locked because she always trying to shoot me. Eh? So I want to pray for her that. Um, she doing okay. Yeah. So every time now we go, oh, what? You didn't go punch your husband because she get the gloves on now. So pray for her and just continue. But I want to praise and also give a praise of thanksgiving for that God always comes true. Even if that's the last fight out, God comes true and he take care of us financially. And so I want to praise and thank God. That if the, was that brother there? You had something? Praise God. Amen, amen. Yeah, you bought them home. <laughs> Yes, amen. Yes, we want to praise and thank God for healing you, bro. Bringing you home safely from Vegas. You know, this all started from like Super Bowl. That's what, a month already? And came home very ill. And then even when he came out of the hospital, he even got dentist, collapsed again, went back in the ER. So, you know, God is good. And he, he, he you know, and then when I talked to him the other day, he sounded way better after they found out that, uh, the ulcer, yeah. So I want to pray that that happened, that because God, you know, make sure that before anything gets worse, that, and he feel better today, he look better, he came rolling in like normal now. So I want to praise thank God, and there's the smile back too. So because uh, the last time at the park, he never was smiling that good. He was in so much pain. So I want to praise and thank God for healing you, and on your way to complete healing, we pray for that. So. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for all your prayers. So let's go to the Lord and pray for uh, our, because um, we're getting hungry now, so i got to go eat my donut. <laughs> Let us all pray. Lord, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for the many prayers and just, so the prayers of healing and the prayers of uplifting and, and for just for those that are in need of prayer. Lord, I want to pray for... Um, First of all, I want to pray for Auntie Leslie that, Lord, you continue to lift her up, continue to completely heal her. And we thank you for stabilizing her, Lord. But I, we know that she's not completely out of the woods. Also be with Uncle Sweets, who about to need help himself, but he's there with his wife. 
and and he, sh- you know, he shared um, what's going on. So Lord, want to thank you, the Lord, that, that uh, we just be with both of them. They've been going through a lot of hospitals, doctors, and ailments, fungal sweets, now for auntie. So Lord, we just continue to lift the family, be with the whole family, with uh, the daughter, the sons, and the rest of the, the, the siblings. But Lord, we also want to pray for uh, Brother Ambrose. And Lord, just we pray for um, comfort for the pain that's going, still continuing with the pain, Lord. That we pray that, you know what, the drugs let us, we just call upon you, Lord, that your strength to stop the pain that's going on with his leg, Lord. But we thank you so much for healing him, that you continue to heal him up and lift him up to you, Lord. We also pray for our Jody that she continues to care for him and continues to all the ill, all the stuff she goes through uh, physically, financially, spiritually, that you continue to give her the strength, Lord. I want to pray for Brother Darren and just for the, we give you praise for just healing him for his uh, scrotum and his ulcer, Lord, that you completely starting to heal him and just to see his smiling face today. We lift him up to you. Pray for Rosie that always been there by his side. Continue to worry about it. Continue to care for him. And and, and then continue to work um, to provide for their needs too, Lord. That you continue to provide for their, their needs physically, spiritually, as well as um, financially, Lord. And continue to lift him up. Be with their daughter to continue to look for a uh, part-time job, Lord, that you, you, you know the right timing, the right job, and the right way. So, Lord, we call upon you to just um, be there for the daughter and continue to provide for her, Lord, during this time. And, Lord, also be the right job that, that offer her um, to be uh, to work, Lord. also want to pray for my wife that you continue to heal her hand. We thank you, Lord, for uh, doing the surgery that went so well, for healing her. And just continue to heal her. Heal her toe, Lord, that, um, that you know, that either the bugger fall off or you just not hurt anymore, Lord. Maybe, maybe she got to get one steel toe, slip or something. I want to pray for her toe as well, Lord. Just continue to keep her healing. But most of all, just heal the inside. Heal her heart from all of the, the issues she's been having to deal with. Also with the parents, continue to uh, take care of them, continue to... Uh, Repair everything that's going on in the house with the, the bathrooms, the bedrooms, and everything. And Lord, just lift them up um, during this time, you know. What a life, and it's still going until you're ready to take them, Lord. We just lift them up to you. Keep them safe. Keep them um, spiritually grounded. And most of all, just just a hand upon the house and everyone that lives within there, the whole family, Lord. We lift them up to you. Lord, we also want to pray for my sister, bringing her here safely, going through uh, her colonoscopy, that it all went well, Lord, and and going home, giving her traveling mercies, Lord, bringing her back next week. But also bless their uh, whole mana and the youth rally that's going to happen next week on Island of Molokai. want to pray for all the churches, all the youth that will be traveling over. Uh, also continue praying for the pastors, Lord, uh, all the pastors that's in the church, not only in their home mana, but all the pastors. You know, it was such a want to pray and thanksgiving for last week having the men's fellowship at New Hope. Want to pray for Pastor Wayne and and all of the pastors over there that they continue to um, do what they do, the calling that you have given them, that they continue to step up and do what you called them to do, Lord. So, Lord, continue to strengthen them, continue to provide for them, continue to um, keep them healthy spiritually and physically, Lord. So they can do what they do, to be the shepherds of the sheep and lift them all up to, to you, Lord. We thank you for all the, the blessings. want to be for um, Roy's family, that you continue to console over them, comfort them. Continue to lift up the whole family, not just not just the immediate family, but all the uncles and the whole family on, on Kauai, Lord. I'm glad that you gave them traveling mercies and having such a great time with family and put mom at rest on her um the wishes that she she had designed us. So we thank you so much for just just knowing such a beautiful lady and just sharing that times, even though it was just a little bit of time being with her, it's always 
uh, was always a pleasure to drive there and just her and, and, and dad would come up and, and say hi to us, smile, and, you know, and just such a blessing to, to have been honored to share that time with them. So we just give the family over to you, lift them up to you. Also want to be for the Viva Holy family who just lost their uh, the loved one uh, and uncle and Uncle Stuart and his uh, his friend so they have cancer. Want to bless Auntie uh, Conchita and Auntie Christy. Lord, pray with Auntie Christy and whatever is there. Keep them up, keep them healthy and whatever is going on in their health that you just continue to be, be there and to provide for them and always bring them to um, to the, to worshiping you, Lord. That they so zeal to worship with you, Lord. Lord, we just give you the honor, praise, and give you the thank you so much, Lord, for just continue to provide for our needs physically, financially, spiritually, Lord. We thank you for our uh, Bible studies group that continue to thrive to get to know you personally and not just reading your scriptures, but also getting to know you and what uh, your son has done for us as we study to walk to Calvary and, and endure everything that he has gone through and all the disciples too, Lord, as we can learn from that, apply that to our daily walk. Lord, bless all those here. And just bless this establishment here, this mall, and all the vendors that you continue to provide for them. And we just thank you that we can have a place to come and worship you. And we pray all these things in your precious, your holy name. May the blessing of Jehovah God, the Father of the Lord of love, Jesus Christ, and the love of the Holy Spirit, the Bible, the Son, now and forevermore. And we all say, Amen. You are mighty, you are holy, you are awesome in your power. You have risen, you have conquered, you have beaten the power of death. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! We will rejoice. Hallelujah! We will rejoice. You are mighty. You are holy, you are awesome in your power. You have risen, you have conquered, you have beaten power of death. Great day in the Lord. We love you guys. Aloha.